Hello and welcome to the very first podcast of The Truth with Walter Berry. I have the honor and privilege of introducing the one and only NBA legend and more incredible man, Walter Berry, as not only an athlete, but as my father. My name is Tiara Berry and welcome to the show. Hey dad, how you doing? I'm doing great, baby. So we had talked about starting this podcast for a minute now. Are you surprised at the conditions that we had to start this podcast on? The conditions wasn't good. I mean, with all going on in the world, especially with the Kobe Bryant thing, it's just not a good thing. But, you know, I think we should talk about it and relate more to what's going on to this story than anything. So let's just start with the beginning of Kobe Bryant's life before we get to his unfortunate ending. When did you first meet Kobe? I met Kobe when I was playing in Italy, and I played against his father. His father was a great player in Europe, and Kobe would always be running around the court, shooting at halftime or before the game. He was just one of them athletes that you could see he was going to be great. And how old was he? He had to have been like 10, 9. So you knew him since he was a kid, for real? I knew him since he was a kid. And what did his father think about him back then when he was, like, coming up? Did he think he was going to really go and become Kobe Bryant? Yes, his competitive skill was incredible at a young age. And he inquired and always wanted to know. Like, he ran up to me. He ran up to me at a, uh, in the gym and was like, Hey, Mr. Berry, can you tell me that spin move you got? That move is unstoppable. Uh, I would like to learn it. And I was like, we're going to teach it to you if that's what you need. But that's when I learned about Kobe Bryant. I saw him at a young age, and he was fearless at a young age. He just wanted to play basketball. That's what he said he wanted to do with his life. So after that, once he got a bit older and you saw that the NBA and the league was looking promising for him, when did you recognize that, oh, shoot, this was Kobe from back in the day actually going to – the Lakers. You know, it's amazing because when Kobe was playing in high school, I watched clips on Kobe in high school, and that's when I knew he was going to be great. Well, when was the first time since then that you saw him? Did you play, like, was you still playing or? I was still playing in Italy at the time, between Italy and Greece. And when I first saw Kobe Bryant play his first year, Again, when he played with the Lakers, mm-hmm. he was not doing so well at the time. Oh, really? And you could see the talent and the ability was there. He just needed more time. And, and what year would you say this was? It might have been 1996, 1998. Mm-hmm. Okay. Somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. And then what changed? After two or three years, it's like he worked on his game, he worked on his craft, and he became Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. And he just kept getting better and better and better. He didn't let nobody stop him. He was a fierce competitor. He just played this game like it was supposed to be played for one of the greats. And speaking of greatness, when did the conversation start to happen that put Kobe in the same arena as the great Michael Jordan? I think after his about fourth, fifth year, he started really coming in to who he was destined to come into. And that was legendary Kobe Bryant that his skill level was amazing. Was there any move of his that you found to be like, yo, how did he do that? His moves, he created moves by watching the great Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. And he idolized Michael Jordan. He did everything Michael Jordan did, walk, talk. I mean, like the patented moves, He, he was amazing. He went through a lot of different time zones. Because when I realized who Kobe was, that was years after he played with Shaq. I kind of realized who Kobe was during, like, when Lamar Odom was playing and other players at that time. Which time period do you think Kobe really shined the most or you would say was your favorite Kobe years? Of course, when he played with Shaq. When they got their first championship, Kobe was amazing that year. Him and Shaq played great together, and they put a team around them that really, really played well together. So how important 
is rings in NBA. Coming from an NBA legend as yourself, how important though is rings? Because you know everybody says it's the Kobe five, it's the Michael Jordan six. Before Kobe got his rings, was he still in that conversation of Michael Jordan? Or do you think it was the rings and the accolades that really made him the sustaining Kobe Bryant that he is today? Of course it was the rings. This game of the NBA, you need the rings to solidify your place in the NBA as one of the greats. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the rings, you can't become one of the greats. It's guys in the NBA right now that don't have rings that, you know, that play great. But they can't be named in the top echelon with these guys because they have no rings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just stepping away from Kobe as the athlete. You've, like you said, had the opportunity to know him since he was a kid. Off the court, how would you describe Kobe Bryant? Kobe Bryant was a great person. And I'm going to tell you a little story about that. Mm -hmm. I was engaged to a woman in New York. And her son stayed in a lot of trouble. But one thing helped this kid out is that he loved Kobe Bryant. And Kobe Bryant wanted to meet him. Mm -hmm. So I took him to a Knicks and Laker game. And after the game, we went back into the locker room and Kobe saw me for the first time in a long time and asked me, Walter, where have you been? Mm -hmm. And it was amazing because he remembered everything about me just by seeing me. Right. And I told him I was retired. I was taking it easy. I was living in New Jersey at the time. But from there, I said, Kobe, I pulled him to the side. And, and talk to him about this little kid that was staying in trouble, was in trouble. Kobe was like, let me handle it. Pulled this kid to the side, talked to him for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you, this kid straightened up his life because of Kobe Bryant. He always was a Kobe Bryant fan. He, did, he really never could believe that I knew Kobe until I took him to Madison Square Garden. And we went back in the locker room and... He was real amazed with Kobe, and he straightened up his life. The kid is really doing good with his life right now, and I'm proud of that kid. And I got to thank Kobe because this might have been a kid that he saved. Right. Whew, you talk about impact, and I think that Kobe has impacted all of us in immeasurable ways. I know growing up, we would shoot into the trash can. And every time we ball up a piece of paper and shoot it to the trash can, somebody yell Kobe. Just because that's like Kobe, he always taking the shots. Um, so we have to talk about it. How did you feel when I told you yesterday that TMZ has said that Kobe Bryant was involved in a helicopter crash? I didn't believe it. And then what happened? I started turning on my television, started watching C CNN. I started really paying attention to what was going on, but it was just a hard thing to believe. My heart was hurt because here's a great man who, on and off the court, as a person, he was really phenomenal person. If you've got a chance to know Kobe, he was really, really a great person and wanted to help people. When he did this for my ex fiance son, my heart went out to him for that. And I understood what a person of that greatness can do for a little kid mm -hmm. to help their life turn around. And even more so, just to make the news even more devastating, we found out that it was eight other people involved in that crash. But what hit us so hard was the fact that out of those additional eight, besides Kobe, it was his 13-year-old daughter, Gianna, who was hoping to father to follow in her father's footsteps to become a basketball player and he would bring her to WNBA games and introduce her and take her to the Lakers games and kind of coach her on what she would want to do and in going into her own being and I saw this clip of Kobe talking to maybe Jimmy Kimmel or Jimmy Fallon and they said that his daughter was like you don't need to have a son you know how they always say basketball players need to have a son because somebody to follow in that greatness and she was following after those footsteps how do you think that that really proved that Kobe was a father the way that he nurtured his own daughter into the game of basketball you know I really believe Kobe wasn't gonna have it no kind of way 
he was going to make sure his daughter was seeking greatness. I watched a clip of Kobe Bryant and his daughter playing and practicing, and she had similar moves that he had. Mm-hmm. And I knew she was headed for great things. Ah. Uh, it's just a it's just a rough time right now and you know i'm i'm still hurting over this situation my heart goes out to kobe wife his other daughters the daughters and and the other families that and the other families that was on this helicopter ride and i'm just hoping that they can find a way to get past this it's going to be hard this is not an easy task do you think the nba will ever be the same the nba it's not going to be the same for a long time. But, you know, we have to move on, I guess. And basically play basketball again. So, Dad, um, what would you say to his family right now? I would just like to say, you know, Kobe and his daughter is up in heaven. God is looking over them. And it's just a hard time. And he's going to be always remembered as one of the greats, not only as a basketball player, but as a person, a man. And they're in the heavens, the gates of heaven, looking over us, saying they're okay. And I think that He's always going to be remembered. Do you feel like this has taught you anything about just life in general? It definitely taught me something. Life is precious. And you got to live every moment of the day that you could because you never know when that time has come because we all have expiration dates. And when that time comes, you got to say you enjoy life. And I'm sure Kobe enjoyed what he did. It's play basketball. That's all he ever wanted to do. So God gave him God-given ability. Mm-hmm. And he util- utilized his talent to seek greatness and did great things. But not only that, he was a great family man. And I've been watching over the years. And I can say I'm really proud of that guy. And God is really looking over you, Kobe, in the sky. So... I think you're going to be working from up above. So, rest in peace. I hate that, you know, for us as an up-and-coming father-daughter duo on the microphone, that we had to make um, this inaugural experience of starting our podcast so sad. But, Dad, are you excited about being able to tell your story? Um, through our podcast together and maybe me and you can actually get to know each other more by just sharing our own personal life experiences on and off the court I think this is a great way that me and you can bond again and really get to know each other like you said and talking about sports is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time Mm -hmm. and the time has come and I don't want to keep hopping on Kobe because I hope he rests in peace, him and his daughter. And I'm 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 still sad and it's hard for me to get up here and really talk right now because Kobe was somebody I knew that really did a favor for me for a little kid. Mm-hmm. So, you know, my heart is grieving right now. Well, Dad, next time, next week, we'll be in better spirits, but we'll never forget the legacy of the Mamba, whether he was number eight or number 24. He will always be Kobe Bryant, and we just pray that God rests his soul. The other unfortunate victims that were involved in that helicopter crash, we we pray for love and light for all the families and loved ones, and that the NBA... And sports fans across the world. LA is affected. America is affected. All across different countries around the entire globe just are feeling this right now. But we ask that you guys like, comment, and subscribe to our new podcast. We will be available on all 
streaming platforms but we just felt like for our inaugural podcast we just give um the time for us to just shed light on who kobe bryant was but stay tuned we look forward to giving you guys more dad i want to thank you you did good were you nervous about your first podcast never nervous never nervous tiara just grieving right now you know more than anything and like i said my heart is hurting right now because he was a great man on and off the court. He was a family man. He was somebody who wanted to really help people. And mm-hmm. my heart goes out to that. So yeah, I'm going to say goodbye for now and peace.